Can you forward forward pictures to someone? I can send it right now. Oh, please do so. Okay, so let's start. I think it's only four o'clock. <clears throat> Definite integrals. I hope you can all see the screen and I'm audible to all of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So Shushant has also joined in. Definite integrals. A very interesting chapter. Almost uh, 70 to 80 percent of the question, which is related to integration, asked in competitive exams, are based on definite integrals because, of course, the options are plain and simple. So, as the name itself suggests, definite integral. That means the answer is a definite quantity. Okay. Now, first of all, we need to understand the first. Uh, formula that we are going to talk about is basically the fundamental principle or fundamental theorem of integral calculus calculus which says that if you have a function whose derivative is f of x okay so as to say that integral of f of x is capital f of x plus c okay remember capital f is called the primitive or antiderivative Whereas small x is called the derivative. So the fundamental theorem of integral calculus says this result is going to be f of b minus f of a. And since this is a very definite result, it's a numeric value. That's why such kind of integrals are called definite integrals. Okay. Uh, quickly talking about the geometric interpretation. When I say I am integrating f of x from a to b. Okay, and let's say this is my graph of the function and I'm integrating from A to B. So if this is your function f of x and I'm integrating it from A to B, it actually gives you the algebraic area between the function and the x-axis. What do I mean by algebraic area? That means, let's say this area, which is above the x-axis, this is called a positive area. Now, the question will arise in your mind, why do we call this area as positive area? Very simple, if you look at the expression, you are actually integrating this, correct? So at a distance x, if you choose a very thin rectangular strip of dx. Somebody has pinged me, just one second. Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. So if you uh, choose uh, at a distance of X, a very thin rectangular strip of the thickness DX. Okay. Of course, the height of this will be F of X itself. Then F of X basically represents the height. D of X represents the width. Okay. So this gives you the differential area or the infinitesimally small area of the strip. Okay. When you integrate this, basically you are adding all these small areas. Now remember, since height and width both are positive here. Now height is positive, I can see, because you are measuring in the positive direction up. How do you know width is positive? How do you know width is positive here? So we are going from left to right. Yes, if you are going from left to right, means your x is increasing. If your x is increasing, dx will be positive. Right, dx is positive means x is increasing. Okay. So in this way, the entire area that comes out in this part, let's say I call this part as C over here. From A to C, the area is a positive area. Whereas when you find this area, okay, here f of x itself, sorry, this is from C. Okay. But if you find the area from C to B, your f of x is a negative quantity because the height here is negative. Okay. So this becomes a negative quantity while this is still positive. Okay. Thereby giving you a negative answer over here. So this entire thing is positive, whereas this entire thing is negative. So this area comes out to be negative. So 
integral of the function from a to b gives you the algebraic sum of the of the area between the function and the x axis okay many people say it gives you the area under that curve that is not completely correct actually okay it doesn't give you the area but however it helps you to find the area in order to find the area you have to cleverly choose your points you have to cleverly choose your signs of that particular part of the curve okay now <clears throat> when you look at this formula it actually reminds you of the fact that you first have to find out the primitive through anti derivative or use of indefinite integrals and then put the limits of integration like this okay remember all the methods that you have learned for finding indefinite integrals will work fine over here correct your method of substitution etc everything will work integration by parts that is also going to be working in this case so what i'm going to do is before i introduce you to uh, further parts of definite integrals which is basically a property driven topic this is a property driven topic okay i'm going to ask you few questions just on the basis of how much you understand when you say integration of f of x from a to b is f of b minus f of a okay so i'll i'll begin with a question okay let me begin with this question itself sorry okay let me start with this question this is a very strange question it says evaluate this directly as well as by substitution of x is equal to 1 by t and examine as to why the results do not tally okay if you look at this question would you all like to try it first yes sir yeah sir can we answer yes yes uh, sir uh, because when we substitute x equal to 1 by t the limits also change from minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 and when we solve the integral we get uh, uh, for t for t we get uh, the integral as uh, half tan inverse 2t and for x we get uh, two times tan inverse of x by 2 So when you sub and since the limits are different for both, uh, we'll get a different answer. Um, limit. If it is different, it doesn't mean the answer would be different. So when you substitute x as one by t, or uh, x goes from minus two to two, but uh, when we do that, t will also have to become zero at one point, which can't happen. So exactly, means- the answer is there is a point zero somewhere in between, right? So when you say t is equal to one by x, okay. and you can see that your limits of integration go from minus 2 to 2 that means there is a point where x becomes zero right okay there your t will become undefined that means the function will suffer discontinuity at a point between minus 2 to 2 if you follow this substitution correct if such in such a case we cannot use this substitution 
getting the point so a very important learning from here is that whenever we are using a substitution make sure that nowhere between that interval of x the newly substituted variable becomes discontinuous getting the point so if you solve it directly minus 2 to 2 dx by uh, x square plus 2 square your answer is going to be half tan inverse x by 2 okay if you put your limits of integration this is how we put the limits of integration when you put a 2 it becomes half tan inverse 1 is pi by 4 minus of minus pi by 4 okay so i think this gives you uh, pi by 4 itself as the answer right but the moment you put x is equal to 1 by t dx is equal to minus 1 by t square dt okay what will happen limit of integration of course will also change minus half to half okay this will become minus 1 by t square dt 4 plus 1 by t square okay which is nothing but minus dt by t square plus 4 minus half to half okay so this gives you the answer as half tan inverse of t by 2 okay yes or no so it's 4t square plus 1 Oh, sorry. Four T square. Yeah. This is two T. There is two tan inverse two T. And is a minus also. Ah, uh, what happened? Sir, ah, uh, uh, nothing, sir. Okay. So when you, when you put a half, it becomes a minus pi by four, correct? And again, when you put a minus half, it again becomes a minus of. So this becomes plus pi by four. I'm sorry, minus of minus pi by four. So it becomes minus pi by four. That means the answer becomes negative, which is impossible. Why? It is impossible because. we know that this function is a positive function correct 1 by 1 by 4 plus x square is always a positive function that means is always about the x axis so how can the area under that become negative okay now this discrepancy has arisen because of a faulty substitution over here because my function becomes discontinuous at some point between minus 2 and 2 which is at zero point so hence please be careful when you are using substitutions to solve the questions in definite integrals by the way just to clear that myth if substitution changes that doesn't mean your answer is going to definitely change in fact substitution will change uh, the limits of integration will change every time you substitute x with a new variable okay so in definite integral we have to change the limits of integration according to the new substitution okay Let's take another question. Hope you can read the question properly. Find the value of integral of zero to. e to the power x square plus 2x minus 1 by 2 by x plus 1 plus integral from 1 to e x ln x e to the power x square minus 2 by paper was quite easy i saw this just 2 minutes to answer this Thank you. 
Just type in your response or you can also speak it out. Okay, any idea, anyone? Oh, one second, one second. Okay, time up. So what I'll do here is I will not disturb the second integral. Okay, let the second integral be integral from 1 to e x log x e to the power x square minus 2 by 2. Okay, while in the first integral, what I'll do is I will substitute x plus 1 st, x plus 1 st correct. So dx will be equal to dt. Okay, limit of integration will change from 1 to e. Hope everybody knows how to change the limit of integration. It's very simple. When you put x as 0, t becomes 1. So lower limit will become 1. When you substitute x as e minus 1, t will become e. So upper limit will become e. Okay. So e to the power, this term here is nothing but x plus 1 the whole square. This is x plus 1 the whole square minus 2. Correct. So it's t square minus 2 by t, okay, dt. Is that fine? Now, so divided by 2. Yeah, now, if you see, the limits of integration for both of them has become the same. Okay, and let me tell you, in a definite integral, it doesn't matter the name of the variable. Okay, so you can call again t as x. Now, this is very surprising that you can, I'm again calling T as X because there's actually nothing in the name. Ultimately, you have to integrate that function and put the limits of integration. That's why the name of the variable at any instant can be changed to anything you want. Okay. So instead of this T here, I will put everywhere X doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change them to X again. So wherever there was a t i put x okay so but this shouldn't be fair right i mean it's not because in the in the beginning of substituting something as x a function of x is t but this is giving out a value see uh shijan what is happening is treat this as a new problem itself don't have any history to it okay once you have made the substitution you have changed the limits treat it as the beginning of the problem See, if you want, you can keep on keeping different, different names, but it's just going to make your uh, problem more complicated. I'm just using the same name just in order to bring it back to the 
same old function. Okay. Ultimately, you yeah. are going to put the limits of integration. So the variable name should not matter at all. Getting my point? So when you're talking about conversion of T back to X, think as if there was no previous relationship between T and X. Start with a new problem per se. Okay. So this becomes the same function. Okay, so you can combine these two functions and write it as single function. So e to the power x square minus 2 by 2, 1 by x plus x log x. Okay, integration from 1 to e. Now, how do you evaluate this? How do you evaluate this? If you look at this very carefully, you would realize that this is the exact differential of log x into e to the power x square minus 2 by 2. Okay. If you differentiate this, you would realize you will end up getting the integrand over here. Try it out. If you keep this as uh, uh, intact and differentiate log x, you get 1 by x. If you keep log x and this uh, derivate, differentiate this, you will get log x e to the power x square minus 2 by 2 into 2x by 2, which is actually x. Okay, so this is an exact differential over here. So the answer for this will be just log x into e to the power x square minus 2 by 2. You just have to put the limits of integration now. So when you put an e, you get 1 e to the power e square minus 2 by 2. Okay, and when you put a 1, you become it becomes a 0. Right. This is as good as saying root e to the power of e square minus 2. I think such an option is present in option number D. Is this clear? So one thing that we learned over here, something which was surprising, that there is nothing in the name of the variable being used. So if you say integration of f of x from a to b, or integration of f of t dt from a to b, integration of f of z dz from a to b, they are all the same. That is nothing but capital F of b minus capital F of a. So in the primitive of the function, you have to substitute upper limit and substitute lower limit and take the difference. Let's take another question. Find the value of integral of big pi x plus r, that is the product of x plus r, r from 1 to n, times summation of 1 by x plus k, k from 1 to n. And this product you are integrating from 0 to 1. Two minutes to solve this again. In fact, two minutes is also a big time for this. Should solve it within one minute. I think Omkar needs to uh, mute his mic.
Done? Yes, sir. Okay. D. Fine. Okay. So let's discuss this. See here, when you look at this symbol, big pi of x plus r times summation of 1 by x plus k. Okay. If you expand it, it will be nothing but x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, da 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 till you reach x plus n times 1 by x plus 1, 1 by x plus 2 till you reach 1 by x plus n. Okay. I don't know how many of you are able to recognize that this is actually the derivative of x plus 1, x plus 2 all the way till x plus n. How many of you are able to identify this? Remember when you're differentiating this, that means you're using product rule, you differentiate one at a time. Correct? So let's say you differentiate the first term and keep others as such. That means you're going to get the same product with the first term. So x plus one will automatically get cancelled off and hence x plus one will automatically disappear. Right? So when you differentiate it, you just first differentiate the first term, keep others as such. Correct? Okay, then you keep the first, differentiate the second, which is again one, and then keep the others as such. Okay, and keep on doing so. And the last term would be x plus one, x plus two, all the way till x plus n minus one. Correct. Now, if you take x plus one, x plus two, etc., common from all of them, the first term is just going to be one by x plus one. Second term is just going to be 1 by x plus 2, etc. till 1 by x plus n. Okay. So this entire expression is just the integral of an exact differential. Correct. Okay. So this dx integration you are doing from 0 to 1. Okay. So basically you are integrating d of something. So answer is that something itself. So this is going to be your answer. And you just have to put the upper and the lower limit in that. So when you put a one, you get a two plus three all the way till n plus one, which is n plus one factorial. And when you put a zero, you get a n factorial. So this, okay. If you take n factorial as common, it will be n plus one minus one. That's nothing but n into n factorial and absolutely correct. Shijan, answer is D. Clear? Everyone? Next. Oh, oh, sorry. If there's a function defined from R to R as sine x plus x, find the value of integral of inverse of this function from 0 to pi. Two and a half minutes to do this. Time starts now. I'm sorry, is that greatest integer? No, no, no. It's an ordinary bracket. Greatest integer will always be uh, listed out here. They would always say, where this represents the GIA function. If nothing like that is mentioned, you have to treat it as an ordinary bracket.
<clears throat> so basically i'm just testing you on your uh, substitution skills right now i have not even started with the first property Okay, Shrijan has already replied. I need two more answers, please. Okay, Shavan has all also said, given his response. One more person I need. So one second. Okay, fine. Okay, so most of you have almost replied. Let's solve this now. Many of us would be uh, trying to find the inverse of this function to solve this question, but that is not required. Okay, what you can do is you can substitute f inverse x itself as t. Okay, so f inverse x itself as t. That means you're saying x is f of t. That means you're saying dx is f dash t dt. Okay, let us uh, put this in in our given expression. So t f dash t dt. Okay. Now what about the limits of integration? When x is zero, t will be f inverse zero. Correct. Correct. So now, how do I find the value of t? f inverse zero means f inverse zero means what value of x will give you this answer as zero it's obvious that that answer would actually be zero so f inverse zero will also be zero so this will become zero next f inverse pi f inverse pi means what value of x will give this answer as pi it is quite obvious that pi will be that particular value okay so the limit of integration is not going to change anyhow Fine. Now, in order to find the uh, integral of this, I can use my integration by parts. Correct. By the way, if this is your uh, f of x, f of t would be what? f of t would be sine of t plus t. So f dash t would be what? f dash t would be cos of t plus one. Oh, I. I got a very simple expression t into cos of t plus one dt again zero to pi. Okay, so now t into cos of t I can use by parts. Okay, and other term is going to be just t square by two from zero to pi. Now for this I will use my uh, tic tac toe method or di method. So t and this is cos t. Differentiate this one zero. Integrate this sine of t. Integrate sine t again minus cos t. Okay. Just put these signs. I hope you still remember these methods. Very useful. Saves a lot of time. So this will become a t sine t plus cos t from zero to pi. This will just become a pi square by two. When you put a pi, this will give you zero. While this will give you a minus one, okay. And when you put a zero, it gives you zero, and this will again give you a one. So your answer is going to be pi square by two minus two. Which option is that? Option A is the right answer. 
option a becomes the right answer so well done i think the first one to answer this again was srijan great let's have another one so limit a tending to infinity 1 by a integral from 0 to infinity x square plus ax plus 1 by 1 plus x to the power 4 plus tan inverse 1 into tan inverse 1 by x this integral is pi square by k k is a natural number what is the value of k Yes, anybody? okay santosh has given a response i need one more response okay so first of all uh, let's forget about 1 by a limit x a tending to infinity we'll take this later on okay first let us focus on the integral itself okay so integral from 0 to infinity x square plus ax plus 1 by 1 plus x to the power 4 tan inverse of 1 by x dx Here, let us substitute one by x as t. So minus one by x square dx will become your dt. 
limit of integration will become from infinity to zero okay and let's let's uh, make these substitutions in these terms so x is 1 by t square a by t plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by t to the power 4 tan inverse t dx is going to be negative negative uh, by x squared x squared itself will be 1 by x square itself would be t square. Sorry, it's x square dt. So it's 1 by t square dt. Okay. So far, so good. No problem. Now, if you simplify this, first of all, let us multiply throughout with t to the power 4. Okay. So, numerator will become 1 plus a t plus t square by 1 plus t to the power 4 tan inverse t dt okay so what i did was i multiplied the numerator and denominator by t to the power 4 but this t square will automatically cancel this off so giving you the numerator term like this correct okay now if i swap the position of this limit i can get rid of this negative sign Right, because there's a property which I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes from now. If you swap the position of the upper and the lower limit, your integral is going to become negative of the previous one. It's very obvious because let's say I'm integrating a function from A to B, my answer would be f of B minus f of A, correct? If I integrate it from B to A, the same function, then my answer would be f of a minus f of b. And both are negatives of each other. Both are negatives of each other. Correct? Sir, sir, we could use properties to solve this question, right? Sorry? We could use properties to solve the question, right? So, so no, no. Right. Does one, just one property is required, which is actually a very obvious property. Okay. Oh, sir, I use another property. It's fine. It's fine. In the, exam, in the exam, they will not ask you whether you have used property or not. But this could be solved even without the use of the properties which are going to come actually. Okay. 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 Now, nothing is there in the name. So, I can put the name back as this tan inverse x dx. Correct. Now, this is your i. Okay. And initial was also your i. Okay, so if you see this, this term was also your i. So let me write that also simultaneously here. 0 to infinity, x square plus ax plus 1 by x to the power 4 plus 1. Now tan inverse 1 by x, can I write it as cot inverse x? Because x is positive. When x is positive, remember tan inverse 1 by x is equal to cot inverse x. Okay. Now when you add these two, Let's add these two. Let's add these two. So when you add these two, it gives you 2i is equal to 0 to infinity. Uh, now re remember, these two terms are exactly the same. So tan inverse and cot inverse will get added up. So it will become x square plus ax plus 1 by x to the power 4 plus 1 into tan inverse x plus cot inverse x, which is pi by 2. Okay. So I is nothing. So this is a property, right? Huh? So this is a property, right? Or no, this is not a property. Or, I'm just adding oh, it. Okay. Okay, sir. I'm just adding it. It's not a property. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate out x square plus one by x to the power four plus one. And I'm going to separate out x by x to the power four plus one. Okay. I'm sorry, how did the tan inverse x become cot inverse x? I missed that part. 
No, no, no. It, it did not become tan inverse x. In the original question, there was tan inverse 1 by x, correct? Tan right. inverse 1 by x is cot inverse x if x is positive. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. That's what I did. And I added both the i's. Okay. How do we integrate this? How do we integrate this part? You divide by x square throughout. You just have to follow your indefinite integrals. So 1 by 1 plus x square. Okay. Here if you take x square st. In the second integral, if you take your x square st. Then x dx will become dt by 2. Now remember, there will be no change in the limits of integration. It will still remain the same for both of them. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just take this up. So in the first integral, we'll take x minus 1 by x to be your k. Correct. So 1 plus 1 by x squared dx will become your dk. Okay. So this is going to be dk by k square plus 2. Okay. By the way, I'm going to evaluate it here itself. Tan inverse k by root 2. Okay. Now, what about the limits of integration? What will happen to the limit of integration? When you put infinity, it will remain infinity. Correct? But when you put a zero, what happens? It becomes minus infinity. Correct? Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, no. so when you put up infinity, it becomes pi by 2 root 2. Okay. And minus infinity will become minus of minus pi by root 2. So, it will become plus this. Correct? which is nothing but pi by 2 root 2 itself. So the first integral evaluates as pi by 2 root 2. So pi by 2 root 2. Second integral is nothing but a by 2 tan inverse of t, which is again pi by 2. Okay. Remember there was a pi by 4 factor outside. Don't forget that. So finally your result becomes pi square by 8 root 2 plus pi square a by 16. Correct? Now, the question actually was to evaluate the limit of 1 by, limit of this multiplied with 1 by a. Okay, so now let me finally use that. So, limit 1 by a of the result. The result was pi square by 8 root 2 plus pi square a by 16 a tending to infinity. So that will become pi square by 8 root 2a plus pi square by 16. Now since a tends to infinity, this term will vanish, giving you the final answer as pi square by 16, which implies k is 16. Which implies k is 16. So option number c is correct. Let me check who all have given the right answer to this. Santosh was the only one who answered this and he was correct. Now we are going to quickly talk about the properties. Properties of definite integrals. So we we'll, so far we learned that Achha, one more important thing which I wanted to highlight. Uh, when you're putting the limits of integration, okay, and you have already uh, solved the problem by integration by parts, okay, be very, very careful. Uh, let, let me ask you this question. Let's say if I integrate from 0 to pi by 2, x sin x. Okay. Now, I've seen people, they apply integration by parts. Good. That's fine. But they misuse the limits of integration. How? They will do it like this. U into integration of this. That is going to be 
minus cos x and in this minus cos x they put the limit of integration only x they forget are you getting my point this is wrong please do not do this okay second mistake that they do is minus integral of derivative of this that is going to be 1 again integral of this minus cos x again here they put the limits of integration okay and whatever they get they try to integrate it again from 0 to pi by 2 please note that these all operations are not acceptable they are wrong operations okay the right way to do it is if you are applying integration by parts first complete the problem thinking as if there is no limits of integration given to you so first integrate it normally without applying any limits of integration so sin x integration is minus cos x okay just leave it like this minus 1 into minus of cos x okay finish off this agenda so this becomes minus x cos x plus integration of cos x which is going to be sin x and finally whatever result you get there you put the limits of integration this is the right way to solve the question are you getting it or if you want to put the limit of integration you have to put the limit of integration on the whole result over here are you getting it and you have to put the limit of integration on the whole integral of, of this you can't put inside partially okay what i suggest is do it after completing the integration by parts is that clear so let me begin with the properties the first property i've already discussed with you there is nothing in the name you can always change the name of the variable being used so f of x integral from a to b is same as f of t integral from a to b second also i've discussed with you if you change the position of the upper and the lower limit it becomes negative of the previous integral okay <clears throat> third property is you can always break the limits of integration let's say from a to b you can make it as a to c then c to b okay and this c can lie anywhere if this function is defined for all real numbers if let's say f of x is defined for all real numbers that means it is from r to r okay then c can be anywhere right but if this function is defined only from a to b then c has to be between a and b okay so many books write that c has to be between a and b this is to be only followed when your function is defined from a to b only is defined from or defined in the interval a to b okay else you can take c to be any real number okay here c could be any real number so it does not be only when uh, f of x is defined in a to b it can be when uh, uh, f of x exists at c yeah that's what f, f of if f of x is only defined between a and b then c has to be between a and b but if f of x is defined for all real numbers then c can be anywhere okay I have seen R.D. Sharma writing this, but uh, please note that this is only true when the function is defined from A to B. Now, this can be further be generalized and you can break the limit of integration at any n number of points. So, you can break but it. But why is it only true like that? I mean, if, we, if it is in that case, if it is that case, then it can be written as minus of that, right? And which is correct. Sorry? Written as A to C. Uh -huh plus integral c to b would become negative why yeah let it be you're going left yeah let it be so, so you can it need not be between a to b right but if your function is not defined uh, beyond b how will you go beyond c how will you go beyond b yeah okay. correct that's what i said if if your function is defined for all real numbers you can go anywhere you want but if your function is only between a and b, it is not defined anywhere else. You can't choose a value beyond a and b. Okay, so this property says that you can keep breaking it at 
so many points depending upon the requirement of the function okay so let me finally break it from cn minus 1 to cn and finally from cn to b okay now on what basis do we break this function basically there are certain criteria that we follow first is if the function faces some kind of a discontinuity in between okay then we prefer breaking the function at the point of discontinuity okay because any interim substitution there on if there is a discontinuity it would influence your answer second place where we uh, prefer breaking the limit of integration is where the function is changing its definition we deal with lot of special functions like mod function gif function uh, piecewise defined function inverse trigonometric function these functions keep on changing their definition in different different intervals of x okay so there also it becomes important to break the limits of integration are you getting my point so these are the scenario under which we are going to break our limit of integration okay if it is a special function if it is a piecewise function or if it is going to be a inverse trigonometric function or if it is going to become discontinuous at some point then it is it is advisable that you break the limit of integration you now at the point of at the critical points i would say or at the point where there is a there, there may be a problem arising we'll take questions based on this first let's start with uh, um yeah. let's take this question the value of integral from 0 to 100 of gif now this is a gif function remember whenever there is a gif function they'll mention it in the question itself unless until mention don't treat any square bracket as gif two minutes to solve this okay shijan has given a response well done shijan you are correct anybody else okay now this type of problem is best solved by plotting the graph if you plot the graph of tan inverse x okay we all know the graph of tan inverse x looks like this okay where it dies at pi by 2 pi by 2 is 1.57 correct this is minus 1.57 okay 
Now, whenever you're plotting the graph of GIF of any function, we normally make steps of size one, one each, correct? So this is your line y is equal to one. In fact, down also we can make a line y equal to uh, minus one, but that is not going to be of much use to us because we are integrating it from zero to uh, 100. Okay, so let's say 100 is some place over here. Okay, now remember when you're taking the GIF of this function, this part of the graph, this part of the graph is going to fall down on the floor like this. Okay, leaving behind a hole over here and a solid dot over here. Correct. Now, after this part, that is now, which is this value actually? If you see, this is your one. Correct. So when you're saying tan inverse x is your one, that means x is tan of one. So this value arises at tan of one. Correct. Post this part, this entire part of the graph till infinity is just going to fall down on this red line. Okay. It's all going to fall down on this red line. So ultimately, ultimately the area that you have to find out, let me just show you that area. The area that you have to find out is the area under these two steps, right? Now this step is not going to give you any area, but this step is going to give you an area of this rectangle. Okay. So dimension of this rectangle is width is one and length is going to be, this length is going to be hundred minus tan one. So your answer will be one into 100 minus tan one, which is option number C, absolutely correct Gaurav and Shrijan. So try to approach this question, try to approach this question from graphical point of view. Let's try another one. Okay, so integration of x to the power gif of x square plus gif of x square to the power of x from 1 to 2. Anyone? Some in one minute. Yeah. Yeah, one second, one second almost. Ashutosh came for a very brief time, then he left. <laughs>
how is your preparation for tomorrow's exam good manageable no <laughs> what happened vision you had so many days off right yeah but i didn't really start until today morning so messed up there okay uh some responses come uh okay not really that's why niranjan is muted himself because he's quietly op opened his computer science book and he's studying it <laughs> whenever a student says my microscope uh, phone is not working means don't expect any answer from me <laughs> okay santosh says dash i'll not say what he said okay uh let me tell you santosh and srijan both of you have guessed it right or got it right mine wasn't a guess but i'm not exactly getting the exact answer i'm yes, getting sir. one sir i'm getting a root three in the answer so i'm just answering b because i'm getting the remaining part of the options i'm getting a term extra i don't know from where it's coming you're getting a term extra yeah okay shall others one second yeah so is it b yes it is b See, since there is a GIF of x square, you know that this will change its value at root two and root three also, right? Okay. So critical point would be root two and root three. So we have to break the limits of integration there. So one two root two. Okay. One two root two. You are integrating. Remember, you are integrating x to the power of one. Okay, x to the power of one plus this is going to be one to the power x, which is one itself. Okay, from root two to root three, root two to root three, you will be integrating x square plus two to the power x. Correct. And from root three to one, you will be integrating x cube plus three to the power x. Okay. So remember, here there was a special function which was GIF of x square, and hence, in light of that, we had to break the limits of integration at root two and root three. So this will just become x square by two plus x root two to one. This will become x cube by three plus two to the power x by ln two from again root two to root three, and this will become x to the power four by four plus three to the power x by ln three. Again, from root three to one. Okay, so let's put let's put these values. Two square by two will give you two by two, which is one. So one plus root two minus half plus one. <laughs> Correct. Yes, sir. Here I will get uh, three root three by three. As two to the power root three. yeah this will give you a uh, 3 square 9 by 4 okay 
let's correct uh, first the rational terms so we'll have a uh, one one gets cancelled over here so we have a minus half and this will become uh, minus half plus one by four minus nine by four correct any other term which i'm missing out any other term which i am missing out okay so what does this give me this gives me uh, this is minus 1 by 4 minus 9 by 4 that gives you minus 10 by 4 do we have such an answer oh plus 5 by 4 is there uh, that means some term i am missing out uh 1 by 2 plus 1 3 by 2 3 root 3 this will not give me 2 root 2 will also not give me 1 by 4 is there and minus oh sir how do we get the 1 by 4 1 second 1 second 1 second this this limit of integration here goes till 2 right so this is 2 over here i wrote a 1 by mistake i'm sorry so this will become an 8 by um, uh, 16 by 4 and this will become 3 to the power 2 by this sorry yeah so this will give you this will give you yeah this will give you 1 uh minus half minus 1 plus 4 minus 9 by 4 so i think this gives you uh take an lcm of that is 7 by 2 minus 9 by 4 that's going to be 14 by 4 minus 9 by 4 plus 5 by 4 so this is going to be plus 5 by 4 so i'm just going to write the answer down plus 5 by 4 now let us focus on the irrational terms what we get okay then i realized my mistake it was a i got it it's b it's b you got your mistake yes okay so root 2 and minus 2 by root 2 will give you plus root 2 by 3 okay this should be there in your answer just check uh this is going to be just root 3 okay Now let's figure out log two terms. Log two terms would be one by ln two, two to the power root three minus two to the power root two. Is this term there in the answer? Yes, it is there. And uh, we have to now see one by ln three terms. That is going to be three to the power root three. <coughs> in fact, it's minus three to the power root three, and there would be a three square term. So let me write that first. 3 square minus 3 to the power root. Okay, is this there in the answer? I think. Yeah, option number B is correct. Okay. Any question? I think after this you should be able to manage. After this, it was just integration, correct? I'm putting the limits of integration. Let's have another one. Let's take this question.
this this could be easily done through graphs <sighs> hope you know how to deal with min function max function i already discussed this a couple of times in the class also draw both the graphs and deal with the bottom most part of the graph Okay, Shavan is given an response. Ah, uh, Shavan, that is not correct. <clears throat> Try once again. Oh, happy birthday, Shavan! Thank you, sir. Where is the party? <laughs> no party, sir. I've been studying computer science. <laughs> so your birthday is very close to Narendra Modi's birthday, also, right? Yes, sir. Great personalities, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> so Rahul Gandhi wished Narendra Modi happy birthday and said, "Where is the party?" So Narin Modi said, "I have party in every state. Where is your party?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Santosh uh, says D. Niranjan says C. Both of you are wrong. That means only answer left is B. <laughs> B is the right answer. So guys, I think uh, you have not been able to identify this function. This function is your. Fractional part of x, isn't it? Okay, so let us try to draw fractional part of x. Fractional part of x, we all know that it's a line like this. Correct? Zero, one, two, like that. Okay, this is nothing but fractional part of minus x. Let me just reflect the same thing about the y-axis. Right, changing the sign of x means reflecting the graph about the y-axis. Correct. By the way, let me just draw more part of the graph. I should not stop here. 
minus one, 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 like this, okay? Now, for the graph of negative x fraction part, you just have to mirror image it about the x axis. Oh, sorry, about the y axis, correct? So this will become something like this. So I'm drawing it in white, okay? So this will become something like this, okay? Something like this, something like this, something like this, and so on and so forth, okay? Remember my playing area is only from minus two to two. So I don't bother about any part of the graph which is beyond this, okay? Now, minimum means, Minimum means the lowest part of the white and the yellow graph. So as you can see the lowest part, I'm just changing my color of my pen. Let me make it blue. The lowest part would be the one which I'm shading with blue. This is the lowest most part of the graph. <clears throat> Correct. So the area that I'm looking out for is the area between under these blue shaded graphs or blue boundary graphs, correct? So that area is nothing but four, direct, four triangles over here. Now each triangle has a height of half and a base of altitude is half, base is one. So each triangle, so one triangle area, area of each triangle is half base into height. That's actually one fourth, okay? And there are four such triangles. So your answer is going to be four into one by four. That's nothing but one. Option number B is correct. This should be an easy one. Okay, next question is, Yeah. Next question is, find the integral of, find the integral of cot inverse of tan x from 0 to pi. Find the integral of cot inverse of tan x from 0 to pi. Oh, Santosh, bad luck. This time I will not give you the options. Zero? No, zero is not the right answer. Pi square by four, pi square by minus pi square by two. No, none of you are correct. Oh, Santosh said pi square by two. Yeah, Santosh, you are correct. Sorry, I didn't see that. Pi square by two, right. Pi square by two is the right answer. How do we solve this question? How do we solve this question? Now, try to recall your definition of cot inverse of cortex.
yeah, cot inverse of cortex. If you recall the graph, I don't know how many of you recall the graph for this. The graph for this looked like this. Correct. I'm sorry. Like this. Okay. So this end is pi. This end is zero. This is pi like that. Is that fine? Any doubt regarding the graph? No, sir. Now I have to find cot inverse of tan x. How do I do that? So can we substitute x as pi by two minus t? Absolutely correct. So let us substitute x as pi by two minus t. Okay, dx will become negative dt. Right. So the integral becomes cot inverse of tan pi by two minus t, which is cot t. Negative dt. What about the limits of integration? Limit of integration will now become pi minus by two to pi by, by yeah. two pi by two to minus pi by two, right? Yes, sir. You switch it over. But we switch it over and absorb this negative sign. Okay. So I have to also write the definition of this from minus pi by two to this. So it will be like this. So this is minus pi. Okay. Now, as I can see, from pi by two to zero, the function definition is something else, and zero to pi by two, the function definition is something else. So I have to accordingly. I'm missing the wrong place, I think. Yeah, I have to change the definition according to the limits of integration over here. So from minus pi by two to zero. Your function will behave as t plus pi. Correct? Am I correct? And from zero to pi by two, the function will just behave as t. Correct? So this is the integration that we need to perform, which is quite easy. Okay, from minus pi by two to zero, and this will become a t square by two from zero to pi by two. So when you put a zero, it's zero. When you put a minus, this becomes pi square by uh, pi eight. Okay, minus pi square by two. Correct, and this becomes pi square by eight again. Minus zero. Okay, so pi square by eight and pi square by eight will get cancelled, leaving you with pi square by two as your final answer. So be very very careful while dealing with special functions and while dealing with inverse trig functions. Next property which I am going to talk about is the most important of all properties, which is called the King's property. Okay. It's property number four, I guess. This property says integral of a function, which is continuous from the interval a to b, can be written as integral of this. Right? It's very easy to prove this geometrically. <laughs> If you look at the function graph, let's say this is your function graph from a to b. 
okay so you want to find out the area under the graph okay now this property is saying that even if you plot the graph of this function the area is not going to change from a to b how let us check it out if i have to draw the graph of y is equal to f of a plus b minus x okay first what i'll do i'll come from the graph of f of minus x first okay so f of minus x graph is nothing but reflect this graph about the y axis so it will be something like this okay this point will become minus a this point will become minus b okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change my x with x minus of a plus b that means i'm going to shift this graph to the right by a plus b units if i do that this end will come at b this end will come at a and the graph will start looking like this okay so the property says that this is nothing but your this graph so this property says that this area and this area are the same which is actually correct because you just flip the position of the corners of the graph which doesn't change the area within the graph okay so this end came over here okay and this end came over here and your graph started looking somewhat like this that doesn't mean the area is going to change now a very special case of this property is integration from let me put a star here yeah a very special case I'll take a special case is integral from 0 to a f of x is integral of f of a minus x from 0 to a all i have done is i have made my a as 0 b as a okay and this property has come about let's take questions on this because this property is going to be used at so many places so let's start solving few questions on them Let's take this question.
done okay Sujan is okay, fine. No, uh, that's not right, Sujan. B, B is also not right. No, that is also not right, Omkar. No, Sandosh, not right. No, Gaurav, not right. Okay, let me discuss this. Everybody has tried. None of you have given the right answer. So let's apply, let's call this integral as i. Okay. Let's apply King's property. So by King's property, this will become zero to pi, pi minus x. Okay, now the sine two pi minus two x, sine two pi minus two x is minus sine two x. Okay, and here I will get sine pi by two minus cos pi minus x, which is again minus pi by two cos x. Okay. Can I say this minus and this minus? will take care of themselves because sine of minus theta is minus sine theta. So I'm you just apply to the denominator. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. In denominator also. This will become. Okay. Yeah, so this becomes uh, pi minus pi minus 2x, correct? So I can write this as, can I just make it as x minus pi here? And make everything the same. Correct. Now let's add these two. Let's add these two. So 2i will be equal to 0 to pi 2x minus pi sine 2x sine <coughs> pi by 2 cos x by 2x minus pi. This and this will get cancelled off. Correct. So I'll be left with 2y is equal to 0 to pi. Let's open this sine 2x as 2 sine x cos x. Okay. This 2 and this 2 gets cancelled. Let's take cos x as t. So sine x, in fact, minus sine x dx will become a dt. So I can write this as one to minus one instead of that I'll observe the minus sign. Can I write it as T sine pi by two T? This is going to be your I. Correct? Now, on this I can apply integration by parts. I can take this as U, I can take this as V. Okay, let's apply DI method. So T sine pi by 2t. Okay, this will become derivative is 1, this will become a 0. This will become 
साइन इंटीग्रल इज माइनस कॉस पाई बाय टू टी डिवाइडेड बाय पाई बाय टू एंड अगेन इफ यू इंटीग्रेट इट इट बिकम्स माइनस साइन पाई बाय टू टी डिवाइडेड बाय पाई स्क्वायर बाय फोर प्लस माइनस प्लस ओके सो योर आंसर इज गोइंग टू बिकम माइनस टी कॉस पाई टी बाय टू डिवाइडेड बाय पाई बाय टू प्लस साइन पाई टी बाय टू डिवाइडेड बाय पाई स्क्वायर बाय फोर ओके द लिमिट्स ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन इज फॉर माइनस वन टू वन नाउ व्हेन आई पुट अ वन हेयर आई गेट अ जीरो व्हेन आई पुट अ वन हेयर आई गेट फोर बाय पाई स्क्वायर ओके माइनस when i put a minus 1 again i get a zero and when i put a minus 1 here i get minus pi by minus 4 by pi square that means your result is 8 by pi square option number c is correct none of you replied with c i was mostly getting d as the answer is that fine got your mistake Let's do the next question. Integrate, integrate log of cot a plus tan x from zero to a. Okay. Uh, a belongs to the interval zero to pi by two. So what was the previous answer? Eight by eight by pi square. Option C. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank. You. Thank you, sir. Okay.
Anyone? So one second. Can I see it? Sorry? Can I say the answer? Yeah, tell me. Is it A by 2 log cosecant square A? A by 2 log cosecant square A. A log cosecant. Yeah, I think it's correct. The answer that the book says is minus A log sin A. Yeah, minus A log sin A. Okay, let me discuss this quickly. So first, cot you can write it as cos A by sin A. This you can write it as sin X by cos X. Okay, 0 to A. If you take the LCM, etc. inside, it becomes cos X cos A plus sin X sin A by sin A cos X. Okay, and this is nothing but 0 to A log of cos x minus a by sin a cos x. Okay. If you split this up as two separate terms, that is log of cos x minus a and minus log sin a cos x. Okay, you can split this further as zero to a log of sine a and zero to a log of cos x. Now on the first one over here, you apply King's property. You apply King's property on this. So when you do that, it becomes zero to a log of cos in place of x, we'll put a minus x. So a minus x minus x will leave you with a minus x. Remember, cos doesn't care about a minus n over here. And as a result, these two will get cancelled off. You don't have to actually evaluate them. So you boil down to integration of log of sine a with respect to x, which is nothing but minus x log sine a because it's a constant. Put your limit of integration, it becomes minus a log sin a. That's your answer. Now, I'm sure you would have come across a very special case of this in your uh, NCRT textbook they, where they asked you to integrate 0 to pi by 4 log 1 plus tan x. How many of you have seen this question? Me. You have seen this question, right? What was the answer for this? If you remember the answer, the answer for this is going to be minus pi by 4 log 2 root 2 or something. In fact, minus pi by 8 log 2. Yeah, log half or you can say like this one second. You can say pi by 8 log 2. Okay. In fact, if you see, this is a same answer. If you put your a as pi by 4, it becomes my, minus pi by 4 log of sine pi by 4 which is nothing but minus pi by 4 log of 1 by root 2. Okay. That's nothing but pi by 8 log 2. So did I miss anything important? I just now joined. <laughs> like what has not been covered in school or any, anywhere else? Of course, we're taking a variety of problems which may not have been asked in school. So uh, can't really comment till you see the recordings. Don't worry. Okay. okay, you can join in from here on. Where were you? Sir, I'd gone out. Okay. Okay, let's try. I think this problem you had already done in school, correct?
evaluate this or this. So one minute question. Pi by 4. In fact, the first one will also be pi by 4. It's a super easy question. It's an NCRT question. So all you need to do is, in this problem, the first part you need to convert by substituting your x as a sine theta. Okay? So dx is going to be a cos theta d theta. So limit of integration will become 0 to pi by 2 a cos theta d theta divided by a sine theta plus a cos theta. Okay. In fact, if you cancel out a pi by two, it just becomes, if you cancel out uh, uh, a from uh, the numerator and denominator and divide by cos theta, it becomes tan theta plus one, which is actually the second problem. Okay. Now, in order to deal with this, at this stage, I will apply, in fact, I can apply it at other stage also. I'll apply King's property. Okay, so this will become 0 to pi by 2. Uh, cos pi by 2 minus theta is sine theta. Sine pi by 2 minus theta is cos theta. And this will also become a sine theta. Okay, add these two up. If you add these two up, 2i will become 0 to pi by 2. In fact, we'll get a 1. Okay, and 2i will be equal to pi by 2. So i is equal to pi by 4. Easy question. Next. Let f of x be sin x by x. Then integral from 0 to pi by 2 f of x into f of pi by 2 minus x is equal to which of the following options? Okay. Srijan, you are correct.
Anybody else? So once. Okay. Santosh, you are correct. Omkar, no, you are not correct. Sukirth? That's correct now. Omkar, that's correct. Yes, I got my mistake. Okay. It's too much of a time you're taking. So, 0 to pi by 2. f of x is nothing but sin x by x f of pi by 2 minus x is nothing but cos x by pi by 2 minus x. Correct? So, it's 0 to pi by 2. Can I just multiply throughout with 2 and make it sin 2x by x pi minus 2x dx? Correct? Now, look at the options. Options all talk about 0 to pi, 0 to pi, 0 to pi. So, the obvious substitution that comes into mind is let's put 2x as t. Right? So, dx will become dt by 2. So, it becomes 0 to pi sine of t. dx is dt by 2. Okay? x here will become uh, t by 2 pi minus t. Okay? This 2 and this 2 will get cancelled off. That means 0 to pi sin t by t pi minus t dt. Correct? Now, what I can do next is I can split this up as sin t. Uh, let me just work on this term only. Can I split this up as sin t 1 by t plus 1 by pi plus t? Correct, Shavan. That's correct. Okay. Divided by a pi. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm just splitting this as if I'm splitting up partial fractions. Okay. So, this becomes integral of 0 to pi sin t by t pi minus t dt as integral of 0 to pi 1 by pi sin t by t plus plus one by pi sin t by pi minus t right now, let me use King's property on the second integral. By the way, this is already my first integral, so I'm not going to disturb it. Let me use King's property on this. Let's apply King's property on this. So, this will give me 1 by pi 0 to pi sin t by t dt plus 1 by pi 0 to pi sin pi minus t is going to be sin t and this denominator is going to become a t. So, it's the same thing written twice. So, 2 by pi 0 to pi f of x dx you can write or f of t dt you can write doesn't make a difference. There is nothing in the name as I already told you. So, your answer number or option number A becomes the right option. Is that fine? Any questions? Fine. Let me move on to property number 5 now. 
property number five is what I call as halving the limit property. Halving the limit property. This property says integral of a function which is continuous. Let's say a function, my function is continuous in the interval 0 to 2a. You can write this as integral 0 to a f of x plus 0 to a f of 2a minus x. Now remember this is the parent property which many of us uh, you know, don't remember. We just remember the results of this parent property which I'm going to do a little later on. But first I, want to, I would like to prove this particular formula itself. Okay, both uh, geometrically and non-geometrically. So let me do it non-geometrically first. If you start from left hand side, 0 to 2a f of x, you can break this up as 0 to a f of x and a to 2a f of x dx. Correct? Now, first integral I will not disturb, but in the second integral, I am going to replace my x with 2a minus t. That means my dx will become minus dt. So this will become, this will be as such, this will become, now limit of integration when you put x as a, t will become a, but when you put x as 2a, t will become a 0. And instead of x, I will put 2a minus t. Instead of dx, I will put a minus of dt. Minus of dt. Okay. Let me just write this also along with it. Okay. Now what we can do is we can observe the negative sign and switch the upper and the lower limit position. So 0 to a f of x dx is again 0 to a f of 2a minus x dx. Okay. In fact, I have changed the name of the variable from t to x back because there is nothing in the name and that's how the property comes up. We can prove this very easily by using uh, geometry also, geometrical proof. So if you are trying to find out the area under a function, let's say f of x, whose graph is like this, from 0 to 2a. Okay. This particular property says that it is same as, let's say I call this area as a1. Okay. The same as adding these two area. Now this area is nothing but the same graph the same graph, but only from 0 to A. Okay. So this area, okay, let me call this as A2. And the graph of this function. And the graph of this function. So let me first draw the graph of f of 2A minus X. See, f of 2A minus X, first you need to go draw the graph of f of minus X. Okay. First draw the graph of f of minus x. You know the graph is going to be mirror image about the y-axis. So this is your graph of f of minus x. Correct? To get the graph of f of 2a minus x, replace your x with x minus 2a. That means shift this graph 2a units to the right. So if you shift this graph 2a units to the right, it comes like this. Correct? In other words, if I draw it over here itself, your graph will appear to be like this. Correct? Now, 0 to A area would be this area. 0 to A area would be this area. Let me call this area as A3. Okay? Now, you would appreciate here that if you split A1, you would realize that this area was actually your A2, which you have shown over here. 
okay and this area is nothing but area a3 so a1 is made up of a2 plus a3 which is what this property says so this is your a1 so this is your a1 this is your a2 and this is your a3 which is actually correct is that clear now there are two important outcomes of this particular property i call it as two important conclusions first conclusion is if your function satisfies this functional equation that is f of x is f of 2a minus x now when does a function satisfy such kind of functional equation assuming your function uh not exactly when it is symmetric about x is equal to a yeah this will be satisfied when the function is symmetrical about the line x equal to a okay if a function is symmetrical about x equal to a let's say the graph of the function is like this okay this is your x equal to a line so if you are integrating this function from a to 2a uh, sorry uh, 0 to 2a it is as good as saying take this area and double it up that means take the area from 0 to a and double this area up okay conclusion number 2 if your function satisfies this functional equation f of x is equal to negative of f of 2a minus x when does the function satisfy this functional equation when it is symmetrical about a point a comma 0 okay so as to say symmetry so as to say that the function must cross or look symmetrical about a comma 0 that means whatever is the area over here remember the same area would be below the x axis also and they will cancel each other out so what will happen your integral of f of x from 0 to 2a will collapse and become zero okay so these are the two conclusions that we normally draw from this property please do not forget the parent property that is also very important many people just remember these conclusions which is not sufficient enough let's take questions on this let's start with this question if u is defined as integral of cos of 2 pi by 3 sin square x from 0 to pi by 2 and v is defined as integral from 0 to pi by 2 cos of pi by 3 sin x then what is the relationship between u and v okay no problem
Anyone? Okay. Shrijan, that is correct. Uh, Santosh, that's also correct. Gaurav, that is correct. Okay, time to solve right now. So u is 0 to pi by 2 cos of 2 pi by 3 sine square x. So let's apply King's property. Let's apply King's property. So u will be 0 to pi by 2 cos of 2 pi by 3 cos square x right let's add these two u's let us add these two u's so if you add these two u's you get 2u is equal to 0 to pi by 2 cos 2 pi by 3 sine square x plus cos 2 pi by 3 cos square x let's use the transformation formula which is cos a plus cos b cos a plus cos b is 2 cos a plus b by 2 into cos a minus b by 2. Okay. So 2u will be equal to 0 to pi by 3. 2 cos a plus b by 2, can I say it will become cos pi by 3? And cos a minus b by 2, can I say it becomes pi by 3 cos 2x? Remember, cos doesn't care about the negative sign within it, it's an even function. Cos pi by 3 and 2 will get cancelled. So 2u is equal to 0 to pi by 2 cos pi by 3 cos 2x. Now, in order to bring it to your expression of v, can I make a substitution over here? Can I call 2x as t? So dx will be equal to dt by 2. So 2u equal to 0 to pi cos pi by 3 cos t, dx is dt by 2, which is half. Okay. Now here we have a function. Let's say I call it as f of t. Remember f of t is same as f of pi minus t. Yes or no? Right? There will be no effect on the function because outside is a cos. Okay. So can I half the limit here itself? Can I say it is 2 times 0 to pi by 2 cos of pi by 3 cos t? Yes or no? That's nothing but 0 to pi by 2 cos pi by 3 cos t. Are we there at the destination? Oh, there is a sign. You have to use it again, sir. Like, yeah. Uh, King's property. Yeah. Now let's apply King's over here. Let's apply King's property over here. So if you apply King's property, it becomes uh, 0 to pi by 2 cos of pi by 3 sine t. Now there's nothing in the name. You can put it back in terms of x. Doesn't matter. Okay, that's nothing but your V. So yes, 2U is equal to V is the desired result that I am getting, which is nothing but option number A. Well done. Many of you replied with option number A. Very good. Correct. Next question.
Let's take this up. If integral of x by 1 plus sin x whole square from 0 to pi is given as a, we have to find this integral in terms of a. No, that is not correct, Shijan. That's wrong. <laughs> that is also wrong. Wrong, Shijan. Santosh, wrong. Sir, I seriously got B. That is also wrong. Yes, sir. I mean, I got B. Yeah, even I got B. That's wrong. How is it wrong? Should I help you out? Okay, let's discuss this. First of all, let me call this integral as B. 
let me call this as b okay so let b be this integral 0 to pi uh, 2x square cos square x by 2 by 1 plus sin x the whole square okay let's do the operation b minus a let's do the operation b minus a a is already given to us so let's do b minus a so b minus a will become uh, remember since the denominator will be the same x square if you take common so x square 1 plus sin x the whole square you get 2 cos square x by 2 minus 1 okay now 2 cos square x by 2 minus 1 is cos x okay so b minus a is as good as integrating 0 to pi x square cos x by 1 plus sin x the whole square correct now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take this as v and i'm going to take this as u Okay, why I'm taking this as V is because it is easy to integrate. So if you want to integrate cos x by 1 plus sin x the whole square, it is very easy to integrate because you can take uh, 1 plus sin x to be your t. Okay, so cos x dx will become a dt. Okay, so it's just like integrating dt by t square, which is nothing but minus 1 by t. So B minus A can I start integrating it? So the first term is going to be x square into integration of this is minus 1 plus sin x. Okay. You can put the limits of integration on the entire thing 0 to pi minus integral of derivative of this into integral of this will be become 1 plus sin x from 0 to pi. Correct. By the way, if you put the value of pi here, b minus a becomes minus pi square by 1 plus 0 minus 0. And here we have 0 to pi x 1 plus sin x. Getting this? Now, this is something which I'm going to evaluate separately. Let's do it separately. So I'm going to start with the problem 0 to pi x1 plus sin x dx. First apply King's property. First apply King's property. So the same i will become 0 to pi pi minus x by 1 plus sin x. Okay. Add these two. So this implies 2i is equal to 2i is equal to 0 to pi pi dx by 1 plus sin x. Okay. So far, so good. No doubt about this. Okay. Now, since 1 by 1 plus sin x, let's say I call this as my f of x function. Since f of x is equal to f of pi minus x, I can half the limit. So I can write this as 2i is equal to 2 pi 0 to pi by 2 dx by 1 plus sin x. Okay. Now apply King's property once again. It becomes 0 to pi by 2 dx by 1 plus cos x. Which is nothing but 2 pi 0 to pi by 2. This is nothing but integration of half secant square x by 2. Integration of half secant square x by 2. Correct. This 2 and this 2 will get cancelled. So it's pi. Integration of secant square x by 2 is tan x by 2 divided by half. So 2 will come up. 0 to pi by 2. So it's going to become 2 pi. When you put a pi by 2, it becomes a 1 minus 0. So that's nothing but 2 pi itself. So how did you get secant square x by 2? This 1 plus cos x is 2 cos square x by 2. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So 2 pi is 2i. Remember, I am finding here 2i only. 
so i can replace this entire thing with so b minus a is nothing but minus pi square plus 2 pi that means b will be a plus 2 pi minus pi square does any option say that a plus 2 pi minus pi square a plus 2 pi minus pi square option a says that so very good question is that fine everyone yes okay next is the property number 6 which is called the even odd property you'll find a lot of resemblance between property number 4 and uh, sorry property number 5 and property number 6 which i'm going to do right now it says that if you are integrating a function from minus a to a it becomes integration of f of x from 0 to a plus integration of f of minus x from 0 to a let me prove this uh, mathematically first yeah yeah so keep i got your message okay so let me prove this mathematically let me start with rh uh, left hand side so minus a to a f of x you can break it up as minus a to 0 and 0 to a let's not disturb this part let's work on this part okay now looking at the proof looking at the result only you'll get the idea how to prove it you just have to put x as minus t correct so this becomes dx becomes minus of dt now limits of integration will become a to 0 now so f of minus t dx is minus dt you can switch your position of the upper and the lower limit and observe the negative sign by the way right hand side will be just carried forward <laughs> so here just switch the upper and the lower limit and observe the minus sign and finally there is nothing in the name you can put your t back as x so 0 to a f of minus x dx plus 0 to a f of x dx this is what the property says now two important conclusions that we can draw from here i'll write down the conclusions here conclusion number 1 if your f of x is even function if your f of x is an even function that is to say that f of minus x is f of x or so as to say that the graph is symmetrical about x equal to 0 line which is nothing but your y axis then your integral from minus a to a f of x dx is going to be 2 times 0 to a f of x guys remember i have not said this but the function is continuous from minus a to a conclusion number 2 if there is rotation symmetry then zero yes if f of x is an odd function that means f of minus x is negative of f of x that means the graph is symmetrical about 0 comma 0 then what will happen integral from minus a to a f of x dx will become zero okay is very obvious that if a function is an even function what will happen the graph will be exactly symmetrical about x equal to zero line which is your y axis so instead of finding this area you can just find out this area and double it up okay so just this area you double it up your job is going to be done so this into 2 will be your total area but when your function is symmet uh, symmetrical about origin then that means there is a cancellation of area happening let's say i have a graph like this okay this area and this area will exactly cancel each other out so integral from minus a to a will vanish okay so this area will be zero 
Now, this is a very important uh, conclusion because uh, we know that every function can be written as a sum of an even and an odd function. Correct? We have done this in our functions chapter. So, whenever you see that your limits of integration are exactly opposite in sign, try to extract out as many odd functions as you can from your given function and just make it zero. The integral of that will be zero. Are you getting my point? And you can only work with the integral of the even function. That is going to save a lot of time for you. Let's take a quick question on this. Sir, is it two? Okay. Srijan says two. Sir, no, sir. I'm sure. Suki also says two. Okay. So no, sir. I only. Oh, okay, okay. Even he said two. Okay. Privately, he said two. <laughs> okay. Let's check this out. This is quite easy. You just have to segregate the odd functions. Odd functions will be. Yes, sir. Two. Yeah, odd functions will be everything except that one. So that one you have to take separately and treat it as, as per the even function criteria. Okay, so this you don't have to evaluate at all because this is an odd function. Okay, so this is just nothing but twice 0 to pi by 4 integration of secant square x. That's nothing but twice tan x 0 to pi by 4 answer is 2. Let's take the next one. Suppose a function g n x is given by this and it satisfies this equation integral minus 1 to this is equal to 0. For all linear function p x plus q, then which of the following option is correct? So if it satisfies well, all linear functions, then won't g and x be zero, like zero function? Why? So because if you consider the areas, then it should be like that, right? Because p p p x plus q can be anything. It can be like any line. So. So the areas will be it will be unequal. So if you want it to become zero, then I thought it should be equal. Mm -hmm. Give me a better reasoning. B. Mm. 
That's correct. Srijan is correct. Anybody else? Gaurav, where are you? One minute. Shouldn't be a problem actually. Yes, sir, it's easy. It's very easy, yeah. That means this should be completely an odd function, correct? Now, what odd function? Now, what are the even parts here? Even parts I can see is p x to the power 2n plus 2. Okay. That's also p a n x square. And it is b n q. Correct. These are the even, uh, no, sorry, even part of the function. Yes or no? Correct. Odd part. I don't have to worry much about odd part because odd part anyways integral is going to be giving me zero. So what they're saying that even the integral of these parts from minus one to one should give you zero. Correct. One thing that I can say here for sure that this thing should be zero. That means Bn has to be zero for all Q. So whichever option has Bn equal to zero, only those option can qualify. Okay, so A and B could be the possible options. C and D cannot be. Okay, next, if you integrate this, you get P x to the power 2n plus 3 by 2n plus 3. And this you get P a n x to the power 3 by 3. Okay, twice of this. Sorry, I've already integrated it, so I have to just put. 0 to 1. Okay. So it's p by 2n plus 3 is equal plus p a n by 3. That's going to be 0. Right. Now p need not be 0. That means if you take p common or if you directly drop off your p, remembering p is not 0. So your a n will be negative 3 by 2 n plus 3. Negative 3 by 2 n plus 3, which is option number B is what it is saying. B is the right option. Oh, yes, I got it. Okay, so a bit of analysis has to go in. Next question. Yeah. If a function is given by this determinant, then find the integral from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 of x square plus 1 f of x plus f double dash x.
Anyone? It's almost said done, sir. One minute. Uh, please also see the uh, video lecture of the definite integral session taken with the other batch. So there I've done more basic problems. Here I've, I'm taking slightly more challenging ones. So, but also remember to see then see those videos once your exam is over. Okay, no hurry. After the exam is over, you can watch those videos. Let's see who has responded. Sukirt, you are correct. See guys, it's, it's just a one minute problem. One minute, not more than that. If you look at the function, if you replace your x with minus x, okay. Remember, nothing will change in the first column. Nothing will change in the second column. But everything in the third column will become negative, isn't it? Okay. Which clearly implies this is negative of f of x. That means f of x is an odd function. Correct? This clearly implies f of x is an odd function. Okay. So how do you become 1? Sorry. Okay, thank God. Okay. So even the double derivative will also be an odd function. Correct? Which implies the sum of these two will also be an odd function. Correct? Now remember, x square plus 1 is an even function. x square plus 1 is an even function. Okay. So x square plus one into f of x plus f double dash x is a product of even and odd, which will actually be odd. So if you're integrating an odd function from minus pi by two to pi by two, your answer has to be zero, which is none of these. Zero is the answer. 
so no need to evaluate the determinant at all it was just based on your understanding of the basic property that i actually evaluated the determinants oh my god <laughs> so no so but then i cancelled off most of the things because it was odd so this is a type of learning for you okay hope you can read this question slightly blurred let me just scribble on it so wait how do you show that even the double derivative is also an odd function if at all f of x is odd the derivative of an even function is odd correct and derivative of an odd function is even wait i didn't know that ha huh? function chapter we did this no oh wait wait, wait. yeah 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 correct 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 oh yes sir yeah now wait I I hope you can read this question now. This is normal brackets. So it's it's nothing but integral of x plus one by x minus one square plus x minus one by x plus one square minus two whole to the power half from minus half to one. Zero, no, Gaurav. That's not zero. So one second. Uh, two. Let's check. Let's check. Okay. Now I'm sure all of you would have two. Okay. Let, let's check. Most of you would have figured out that this is actually. X plus one by x minus one minus x minus one by x plus one whole square under root, correct? Which actually is mod of x plus one by x minus one minus x minus one by x plus one. Okay. I'm not sure how many of you accounted for this mod thing. Many of us have this habit of writing. Square under root as the same thing, which is not correct. It's actually mod of the same thing. It's all my mistakes, sir. 
Okay. Yeah, Omkar seems to be correct. Let's let's discuss it completely. So this will become minus half to half. Uh, if you take the LCM inside, it will become x square minus one. Yes, sir. Four x. Four x will come up. Correct. Now, if you draw the wavy curve for 4x by x square minus 1, which is actually 4x by x plus 1, x minus 1, the wavy curve will give you the sine scheme like this. Correct? Now you're dealing with minus half to half. Minus half is here, and half is here. Correct? So can I say from? Acha. By the way, even even I don't need to do that. I can say that this function will always be an even function. This entire function is an even function. Why? Because if you change your x with minus x, it just becomes minus 4x by x square minus 1 mod, which is same as mod 4x by x square minus 1. That means f of minus x is f of x itself. So I can first make it as 2 times 0 to half mod 4x by x square minus 1. Next go minus one s t and now I don't even need this part. I can only deal with zero zero to half interval where the function is negative. So it becomes negative four x by x square minus one. I'm sure by this time you would have known how to integrate this. So if you take a minus two out, so minus four zero to half two x by x square minus one. This integral is minus four ln x square minus. Okay. Put first half. Half will give you ln three uh, by four. Okay. Zero will give you zero. So that is just going to be minus four. Sorry. Plus four ln four by three. Okay. So is it ln of minus or not defined? No, you are taking mod. Okay, okay, okay. So I think this is your answer. Sir, I didn't get it actually. I missed by a constant, I think. Yeah, I missed by a constant. Yeah, yeah. Is that fine, guys? Uh, then this chapter is pretty long. It's not a small chapter. We have a lot of things to cover. I think uh, the next class, which is uh, next class uh, on Thursday, Friday is your English exam, right? Lol, yeah. <laughs> so please study English before and don't uh, bunk on that day. That's going to be an important class. Sir, we won't bunk, sir, but we won't study English before us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know last moment you you guys are going to study. Anyways, uh, we'll we'll do a lot of important things uh, the next class. So as of now, I am just stopping the session over here, and all the best for tomorrow's exam. Thank you, sir. We need it, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Over and out. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, class over already. You joined late, Suket. Four to seven. Thank you, sir. Thank you.